In this video, I'm going to go over the keyboard shortcuts for Mixbus 32C 7.1. Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles and I want to show you the new keyboard shortcuts that we've worked on for the 7.1 update. And I really like how they add to the workflow and the overall usability of Mixbus and Mixbus 32C. So let's dive in and take a look. Okay, the first keyboard shortcut we're gonna look at is called slip editing. And this is actually something that you could do previously but it wasn't very intuitive. And I think we've made it simpler to perform. So what we have to do is hold down Command and Shift. Then as we click on a region, we can move that region back and forth. And why you would wanna do this is sometimes you already have your crossfades in place. So for instance, let me move this over and we can make a crossfade like that. And we can make another crossfade here. So we don't want to touch the crossfades, but we do want to move the ray form within the region. So once again, just move this back and forth and you can get your transients perfectly lined up just how you want it. Another thing we've added is a really easy way to show the overlaid and the stacked views on your track. So before you had to right click and go to layers and then choose overlaid or stacked. And now we have a keyboard shortcut where you can do the shift and then curly bracket left for overlaid and curly bracket right for stacked. So now you can see all your regions stacked on top of each other. And we can go in and we can move things around. We can raise things to the top so you can hear the region in that area. Once we're in the stacked view, we can use the pipe key, which is shift, and then the straight line right here. So if I want to take this region and move it to the top, I can do that now. So whatever is highest in the layers, that's the one you're going to hear. Another great update to 7.1 is the new features for the playlist. Now playlists have been around for a while in Mixbus, but with 7.1, we've taken the playlist options and added a lot more functionality. And I think you're really gonna enjoy what we have. So let me show you some of the things you can do. So before we could click on P and we can see all the different playlists we have for that track. But now if we press shift and question mark, this brings up a playlist dialog box that we can now change the scope for only this tracking group, record arm tracks, and all tracks. So in a previous session, me and Ben recorded a bass and a guitar at the same time. So even though physically they're not right next to each other in the session, they can still be grouped together with a group ID that gets created when you record something at the same time. So because of that, I can go to my bass track and with the scope set to record arm tracks, I can now change the playlist for both tracks. If I want to go in and only change the bass track, I can do that without touching the guitar track. And I can also make a compilation of any part from a previous playlist. So if I go to playlist 10, and let's say I like something from measure seven, I can copy this go to my comp track. I can either choose to delete what's already there or just add on top in a layer. I'm gonna to choose to actually delete at this point. Then I can paste this in. So now let's say I wanna take what I've already edited and make a fresh playlist that is all consolidated together. What I can do is take my comp two, copy the playlist. It's gonna come up with another dialog box confirming the exact action that you're performing. So we are copying a playlist for this tracking group. I can name it Bass Clean, press New. Now you can see my Bass Clean playlist right there. And now what I like to do is just make a range selection. I can right click, consolidate range. Let's call this Glued, and I can rename it. So now let's say for example that you've recorded a full band 
and you want to make a copy of all those playlists before you start editing. Now we can change the scope to all tracks. I can say copy playlist, and I can say all tracks, edit, press new. And now if I go to the vocal, for instance, now we can see we have an all tracks edit playlist ready to go. You can also see under the track menu that we've added shortcuts for new playlists for all tracks, record on tracks and selected tracks, and also copy playlists for all tracks, record on tracks and selected tracks. So if you simply want to make a new playlist for let's say the vocal track here, we can hit shift and quotation mark. That's going to bring up a dialog box confirming the action that you're performing here. New playlist for a selected track. And if you want to copy a playlist, we can do shift and colon. And now it says copy a playlist for selected tracks. So whether you like to use the dialog box to make a new playlist or copy playlist or use keyboard shortcuts, you can integrate these into your own workflow at your own pace. Okay, this next feature I'm really excited about because before when you wanted to do a pre-roll recording, it would go back two measures, but you couldn't hear the information that you already recorded on the track. So now we fixed that to where when you do the pre-roll, you're gonna hear the disc information up until the cursor point, And then from then on, you're gonna hear the newly recorded material, whether that be a vocal or a guitar track. So for example, if I put my cursor on measure four, I can use the shift and greater than key to start my pre-roll. You're gonna hear the click track. One, two, three, four. Hey guys, this is a funk song. Hey guys, this is a funk song. All right, now notice that even though it started recording way back here, the region starts where the cursor was, but this is really cool. We can actually pull back the information. So that way if you accidentally come in early or come in late, we can adjust the region to make sure none of your recording is lost. And let's go in and make a new playlist. New playlist for selected track. We're gonna call this count in. And now if I do shift lesser than, it's gonna give me a metronome click, but it's not gonna actually do any pre-roll. Two, three, four. Hey guys, this is the funk song. What's up guys, this is a funk song. So as you can see, there wasn't any pre-roll, so I can't actually pull back the region because we just simply counted in. So this gives you a few different options when you're trying to record yourself. And I do this all the time when I'm recording acoustic guitar sitting in front of my desk and I don't have another engineer to run the session. And I really like the keyboard shortcuts because you're already used to using this area of the keyboard. For instance, command and comma is actually entering in a punch point. And if I want to go to measure six, I can go command period to insert my punch out point. So whether you like to punch in, punch out, or use pre-roll, this gives you a lot of variety in your workflow. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna do is talk about the opaque feature. And this could also be referred to as sound on sound. And that simply means that when two regions overlap each other on the same track, you're going to hear both at the same time, instead of the highest always being heard and the lower being muted. So something really cool that we can do is let's go ahead and make a new track. We're going to call this Claps. And we're just going to set it to mono. All right, so now here's my clap track at the bottom. Let me set my input. Now we've took a previous shortcut that was used to raise to the top and we made that the opaque shortcut. So previously raise the top was control zero and now we've made control zero opaque. And you could already right click on any region and go down to gain and you can see the opaque option right there. If you wanna mute a region that is control one, normalize is control three, boost or cut gain is control six or seven, and now opaque is control zero. 
So I'm gonna set my cursor to measure four and use my pre-roll to give me two measures of pre-roll so I can get ready to start clapping, okay? Here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, and let's do the same thing. So we're gonna record over what we've already done. One, two, three, four. And let's do this one more time. One, two, three, four. All right, so we can either pull back the region to bring in our one, two, three, four count off, or we can just keep it right on the downbeat. But we're actually going to go to our stacked view, and I'm gonna highlight all these regions, and I'm gonna hit Control Zero, and now they turn into this transparent region. So now let's listen to what happens. So now I have multiple regions on the same track that can be heard all at the same time. And now I can apply processing like EQ, compression, maybe some reverb. So let's check that out. I'm gonna add the G-verb plugin to Mixbus 12. And let's just make this a small hall. Now I'm gonna send the clap track to Mixbus 12. And I can either leave this at 12 o'clock or I can blend in the dry and the wet signal. Let's hear how it sounds with it at 12 o'clock. So this saves you a lot of time by not having to create multiple tracks just to record the same part over and over and over. All right guys, let me know what you think of these features down in the comments. And if you're not subscribed already, be sure to do that down below and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever we release new content. I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.